Hey guys, and welcome back to History Revision Success. So I've had quite a few requests for videos about actual paragraphs of the essay. And I know lots of people found um, the videos I filmed on essay structure and how to answer certain essay questions very helpful. So what I've done is compiled my five top tips for writing better. How do you write your essay in the best possible way to get the A star that you deserve. So we've got five tips. Um, most of these tips will kind of fall into each other. And as we go through them, you'll see how they work in kind of um, in unity with each other to really push your essay to, to higher levels. So tip number one, embed the quotation. Now, most of, well, I think most of the essay questions you get asked for the the um, for not the extract, the other, the argument based essay are quotations with a how far do you agree statement. So, for example, the question I'm going to be using throughout this video as a demonstrating question is this one. Religion was the most important factor in causing rebellion from 1536 to 1569. So this is from the Tudors 1C topic um, from the AQA exam boards. As you can see, we've got a quotation followed by a how far do you agree? It's not the only way they ask questions. Sometimes they ask you an actual question, but when you get given an, a quotation, it's gold dust, okay? You throw that quotation in as much as you possibly can, or simply just use the wording of the question. For example, when you write your essay and your introduction, we have to see that quotation or at least the wording of the quotation or the wording of the question embedded in there. So as you can see, I've got my opening sentence of my introduction, the first thing the examiner reads, and it says religion was an important factor in causing rebellion from 1536 to 1569. However, only when in conjun conjunction with other underlying causes. Then I continue with my introduction and would carry on and explain what my argument is straight away the examiner can tick the box of this person has engaged with the question in order to get the highest grades and on the mark scheme level four and level five you have to answer the question it's easy to show you answer the question if you are using the question in your sentences here's my whole con my whole introduction short sorry just to show you how this works as a whole introduction. So we've got religion was an important factor in causing rebellion from 1536 to 1569. However, only when in conjunction with un other underlying issues. Religion united the masses and was often used by disgruntled elites to disguise political motives and encourage participation in rebellion from the commons. Likewise, the populace continually experienced socioeconomic grievances, which contributed to a general feeling of discontent that was only exacerbated by religious grievances. Therefore, whilst not the single most important factor, religion was essential in causing and maintaining rebellions in the period 1536 to 1569. Now, nobody can argue that I have not answered the question there. Not only have I answered the question, but I've got a clear line of argument, which is going to be one of my later tips. That is an absolutely clear introduction tailored to the question. And the embedded quotation is an easy, surefire way of making sure you do it. Now, the introduction is the easiest place to start. The next thing I think we need to do is use these embedded quotations within the rest of the body of the essay. So I think tip three is where I really show you how to do that um, alongside writing some really excellent topic sentences. But tip number two is still focused on the introduction. So what we want to show is a clear argument journey. Now, if you've watched my video on how to structure A-level essays, I talk about a three-part structure not including your introduction and conclusion, of course. Paragraph one, we want to agree with the factor in the question. Paragraph two, we want to either disagree with the factor in the question or present an alternative factor. And paragraph three, we want to show some level of nuance or synthesis or something where you're pulling things together to really host that A star level argument. Now, within your introduction, you can already set out the outline of that journey to come. A fluid, clear essay comes from a very clear journey. 
Now, as an example, we're sticking with this question. So just to remind you, we're looking at the role of religion as the main factor in causing rebellion from over this specific time period. And I've put back on the, on the screen my introduction that I just went through with you to show those quotations. Now, rather than focusing on the embedding quote, embedded quotations, what I would like us to do this time is look at the three part journey. So what you can see I've actually got in my introduction is three sections to my argument. The first, that religion is important. The second, that religion was used by the nobility or the elites as a way of disguising their own kind of politically motivated um, or, or factional discontent or politically motivated um, grievances or desire for more power. They knew that religion was a unifying factor. They knew if they used religion that the masses would come and support them. And thirdly, that even for the masses themselves, while religion was probably arguably the thing that pushes them to go and rebel, there is underlying socioeconomic grievances that are all the time causing problems as a foundation. Then I finish with my final statement to draw us back to the question. Looking at that, you should be able to clearly see what my three paragraphs are going to be. I'm going to have religion was important, my factor in the question, I'm going to have, on the other hand, the elites were motivated by political reasons, an opposing factor. And I'm going to finish with my nuance that religion was very prevalent all the time, but other things were also going on under the surface. In this case, I'm arguing socioeconomic issues. Factor in the question, opposing factor, nuance or synthesis that marries up exactly with what I talk about in my how to write A-level essays, um, more extended video where I go into way more depth with that. But that shows you how you can get that sorted in your introduction. Within that introduction, you can have the journey of the essay stated and done. Tip number three, topic sentences. For me, somebody who has read so many A-level essays, this is one of the most important thing at ensuring both you're linking to the question, you're answering the question, and you have a clear journey. So tip one and tip two are cemented by getting this right. Now, these are my paragraphs. These are my topics. This is what I want to show in each of my topic sentences. So I'm going to show you now how I would write them out to embed the quotation and get my point across. Just to clarify, a topic sentence should in one sentence tell you what that entire paragraph is going to be about. It should leave nothing to chance. You read that topic sentence, you should be able to tell the, another person exactly what's to come. So as an example, for my paragraph on religion, I would, uh, I would start with, religion was an important factor in causing rebellions between 1536 and 1569. I'm agreeing with the question, I'm showing favour for the question, I'm telling you I'm going to write about religion, I know exactly what's to come. This paragraph is all going to be about why religion was important. My second paragraph, as we know, needs to be about political reasons. So political discontent was arguably the primary motivating factor for the elite who manipulated the religious grievances of the masses to draw their participation. So within this paragraph, I'm going to put all the reasons why I think the nobility and the more wealthy people involved in these rebellions were um, motivated primarily by polit political reasons or by faction or discontent. And then I'm going to have at the end a point to prove that actually they used religion to entice the lower parts of society to join them and, and make the rebellion more threatening. Finally, for my paragraph on the socioeconomic reasons, I have religion encouraged the populace to rebel. However, underlying socioeconomic grievances laid the foundations of their discontent. Not only should you be able to see that each one of these topic sentences marries up identically with my purpose of the paragraph, but I have continually embedded parts of that quotation throughout all of them. There is nobody that could argue this essay is not tailored to the question because religion, religion, religion is everywhere, even though it's not my point for every single one of these paragraphs. 
Tip four, the other end of the spectrum, the linking sentence. Now a linking sentence needs to be that final sentence in the paragraph that draws us back to the question. So the topic sentence tells us what's to come and the linking sentence shows us and proves how everything you've read answers the question. So here's some examples. So for my religious paragraph, I would finish by saying, therefore, while clearly an important cause, religion was not the sole nor most important factor in causing rebellion from 1536 to 1569. For my political paragraph, therefore, religion was not the most important cause as it was used by the nobility to entice the masses into supporting their primarily politically motivated rebellions. And finally, whilst religion was arguably the only reason persuasive enough to push the populace to rebellion, it was not the most important cause as underlying socioeconomic grievances were an essential pre-existing component. Within each of those paragraphs, I would have to prove the point that I'm making, but every single one of those linking sentences not only reiterates the point that's been made in relation to the question, that religion is not the most important cause because of this reason, but it's also restated that small bit of the argument that I wanted to make in that paragraph. Now, as you can see from my introduction, through my topic sentences and through my linking sentences, you have the whole argument. It's fluid, it's clear, it continues to run. And the point that I make is that if you took out just your topic sentences and your linking sentences and you had them in a list, it should make sense. Fine, we haven't got any evidence and there's no real reason anyone should believe you, but you should be able to track the pathway of the argument just by looking at the topic and linking sentences. And what I've done is I've put them all there for you. So that point is hopefully really, really clear. All of our references to religion and the question are in blue. As you can see, that's continuous throughout. All of them link up. All of them make the next point in the argument that needs to be made. Hopefully that's very clear for you, but they are, I believe, one of the most imperative, most important elements of writing a good a star essay. Some of the best essays aren't necessarily the most intelligent. And I want to make that point clear. They're the, some, the best essays often are the clearest essays. And a clear essay is written with very clear topic and linking sentences that prove you're answering the question. Now for my final tip to get an A star, I believe the best way at hammering it home, as long as you've got all those other four things kind of very clearly um, cemented into your head and into your essay, is using the most precise and specific evidence you can. Now this ties into a little bit my video I filmed on revision and how to revise, but I'm a big believer in finding some very, very good precise evidence and often from places that are not the textbook. So go and do some extra research, go and read some historians work, select precise evidence, places, names, statistics, things which you can really use to hammer home your arguments and then learn a select number of them that you can use in multiple circumstances. So in my video on revision, I try to make it really clear how you can actually formulate very small paragraph plans, which can then be adapted, manipulated to various essays um, and made to fit so that you don't have to learn huge reams of evidence. You can actually select quite cleverly beforehand the best specific points that will fit the most essays. As an example of what I mean by precise specific evidence, um, I'm going to use the evidence here of um, precise examples for religiously motivated rebellions. And actually this comes from my other video I filmed on why rebellions were caused by religious reasons, which goes into far more depth about the religious causes of rebellions. Um, so if you're, if this is helpful to you, and if you want to go and watch that to kind of reinforce that understanding, I really highly advise you do. Um, 
But as I said, so our dates start in 1536, that would be the Pilgrimage of Grace. And behind me, I've got all of my very specific pointers and evidence that would show a very strong knowledge of the Pilgrimage of Grace. So I'm not gonna go through them. You can see them behind me, but we've got loads of really good things like names such as the Bishop of Lincoln. We've got places like Louth and Horncastle. How much better saying Louth and Horncastle than just saying the North of England, um, rather than just saying, um, Saints days were abolished saying St Luke's day was abolished and that was a really specific day that the rebels specified as being an issue. Similarly we've got the Western Rebellion, a variety of, um, of information here. One of the best points I think is the fact that, and I'm actually hiding it, but 13 of the 14 articles were about restoration, sorry, about um, restoration of the Catholic faith rather than reformation and movement towards the Protestant faith. We've got the fact that it was Cornwall, Devon and Norfolk. We've got the fact that um, they marched under the five wounds of Christ. We've got the fact that they wanted the return of papal relics and two monasteries in every county. It's all very specific. Kept far less, but some points behind me. And Wyatt, again, some very specific um, points there. For example, Maidstone supplied 78 rebels um, as it was a very Protestant county, which shows there must be some correlation between the two. Finally, the Northern Earls, as we can see, um, we've got a quotation that would be very, very good. Um, we've got the fact that leading protagonists were Catholic, for example, Northumberland, Westmoreland, specific names, Bishop Pilkington, um, very precise yet again. Now, another thing I was asked quite repeatedly was how do you put this into an essay, an actual paragraph? So what I've got is my topic sentence that we had before. Religion was an important factor in causing rebellions between 1536 and 1569. I've got my linking sentence down here. Therefore, while clearly an important cause, religion was not the sole nor most important factor in causing rebellion from 1536 to 1569. And I'm now going to show you how I would filler the middle bit. In a history essay, we want to see really the two skills of evidence and analysis. What evidence are you using and what point are you making from that evidence? So hopefully with this paragraph that I've written, I'm going to now show you how this is a very, very strong A star level paragraph packed full of detailed specific evidence with um, some very good analysis running through it. So I'm not gonna read this out. You can read this yourself if you choose to, but what I've done here is shown you firstly where my specific evidence is. And if we just have a look at that specific evidence, you know, things that are sticking out to me, the fact that we've got 40,000 pilgrims, we've got all of the dates of every rebellion. We've got the fact that um, 13 of the 14 articles, reference to the catechism, reference to the chantries, reference to certain people like the Bishop of Lincoln, the mention of St. Luke's Day, that person is highly knowledgeable about this topic, okay? And throughout that, I've got some analysis sentences as well. But what this should show you is that, firstly, as I make clear in my um, video on rebellions, is that rebellion essays, I believe, are some of the easiest essays to answer. So if you are studying the Tudors and you do get a rebellion essay, you have to go for it and you have to go and watch my videos on rebellions so you know exactly how to get A stars on them. But secondly, how that specific evidence just makes you sound so clever. OK, now there's no reason why one person rather than the other needs to sound clever here. If you both go and find the evidence and put it into your paragraphs. OK, um, as long as you have the topic sentence, the linking sentence, the fluidity of your argument, as we talked about, three parts clearly specified in your introduction. There's an A-star essay. Fantastic. Well done. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, I'm thinking about doing another video on paragraphs with perhaps some different topics, different themes, different examples, maybe going into a little bit more detail about analysis and how to really show some very skilled analysis. Um, so if that's something that you would like, please like this video and let me know so I know that I should go and do that. Um, but I really hope I've helped you and um, I look forward to, to filming some more videos for you soon.